La Jolla, California. I'll be at the La Jolla Comedy Store August 5th through the 7th. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'll be there August 18th through the 20th. Austin, Texas. I will be there September 2nd through the 3rd. Get your tickets for those shows and all shows on my website at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honey Do, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. And again, I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching this show, subscribing to this show, for supporting this show. You're legitimately changing my life, and it, I couldn't be more thankful, for real. So if you are watching, hit hit <laughs> subscribe on YouTube. It's free. It's a free way to help the show, all right? And if you got to have more, you got to check out the Patreon. It's called The Honeydew with Y'all. I highlight the lowlights with y'all. And there are stories like you've never heard in your life. I promise you that. It's five bucks a month. If you sign up for a year, you get over a month free, and you're getting the Honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost, all right? If you or someone you know has that story that has to be heard, Please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com, all right? I'll be in La Jolla August 5th through 7th, Philadelphia August 18th through the 20th, and Austin September 2nd and 3rd. That's Labor Day weekend, so get your tickets to that and all shows at ryansickler.com. Now, that's all the biz. You guys know what we do here. We highlight the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers, and I am very excited to finally have this guest First time here on the Honeydew, y'all. We've Please welcome. It, we've worked it. Bobby Lee. Yee! Welcome to the Honeydew, Bobby, Bobby Lee. Bro, 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 I did your thing. Other one, the crab crab. You did the crab feast. Yeah, so you it's did. not like, like, like it's not my first time. On the Honeydew it is. But, okay. Which I said. Or, or, <laughs> that's right. That's fine. But can I ask you a question? Sure. You like this melon? I'll, no. The the green melon. Is that what the, is that what honeydew is? That's what honeydew is. The yeah, whole yeah. point of it, very quickly, because I've said it a lot, and I, but I do want to explain You don't have to get to into you. it. if You can tell me off screen. No. Uh, off screen? Or off camera. Are we in a, we're in a movie? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was eating at a diner one night, and they had that fruit cup there, and I ate everything in the fruit cup but except the honey, for the honeydew, right. including the red grapes, which I don't I like green grapes, but I ate red grapes over the honeydew. Yeah. And when I got up and I walked out, I saw honeydew scattered on all the tables, and I just thought, man, that's a, that's a perfectly good fruit that most of us just fuck off. We'll pass, yeah. And then it dawned on me that in life— I am that. I'm a perfectly good person that's been thrown away and tossed away again and again it's and funny, again. It's funny. So I wanted to lean into the shit show because uh, instead of everyone's highlights, look at my life. I'm on a yacht. I'm on a this. Like, I want to know when you weren't on a fucking yacht. Right. When you were on your knees. Right, right, right. So what I'm saying is, is that when I'm, I wasn't saying anything, but uh, my point <laughs> is, is that my point is, is this is I know, th- I know you and you say a lot of things like, so and so didn't give me, you know, respect back then, or he ignored me, or this because I I have the same thing. Mm-hmm. I have a list of people I'm going to get revenge on, right? But do don't you think a lot of that is in our minds? I think a lot. No, I, I well, yes, because we do think it. It's in our minds. Yeah. However, it's happened. You can't deny but it happens that to everyone. Sure, everyone gets disrespected and shit on all the time. Yeah, but I don't. I don't hold. See, here's the thing. I told you before we were talking. I don't harbor ill feelings, I use it as fuel to move forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, go ahead. But also, most of the people that have big-timed me and I, they've all turned out to be shit shows. You know what I mean? I'm like, huh. Right, I, uh, the one thing that's been, how old are you now? I'm 49. We're the same age. It's been, I'm 50. It's one of the lessons that's taken me longest to learn in life, and I still slip up here and there, is that most things take care of themselves. I don't have to jump in and say this and do that and blah, blah, blah. But, but let me just like, have a point, though. So I was at Keegan's Keegan Key's birthday party, mm-hmm. and Ron Howard was there. I'm a big Ron Howard fan. Fuck yeah. Right? And so I was, like, telling Kalila, I was like, I got to say something, right? She's like, don't just ignore it, right? And so he was at the buffet. And I love Apollo. Thir- as Apollo- <laughs> I said, I love Apollo, right? He just kind of walked away with the thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, he kind of just walked away with thing, right? And I got about 13, and he was gone. By the, by the time I said 13, he was gone, yeah. right? My point is is that, he number one, he probably didn't hear it. 
right? Number two, he probably gets it all the time, right? So it's like normally I would be like, oh, I'm going to take that person. I'm going to get revenge and <laughs> run out. But, right. at the end of the day, right? yeah. but at the end of the day, he probably didn't hear it. And, you know, it's a party. That's He's got other people. Though. No, That's what I'm saying though is, is that. But I know that dudes come up to me and go, I've heard like Bobby Lee's an asshole. And they go, why? Because, oh, well, he's, you know, I said I've met him three times. And you know what I mean? He doesn't remember me or whatever like that. But it's like something that I'm not really privy to or I'm aware of. My point is, is that in life, right, you know, maybe it's a lot of it just lives in our head. Yeah, well, I did shows with you and knew you for well over a decade. And then when I got to work with you individually, yeah, on the comedy jam, you were like, Who are you? And but <laughs> see, but, that's what I'm, I, yeah, yeah. But I, I but I, I, I instantly remember that. But also, I didn't take it personally because I know that is how it is. Some people are. They're, they're, Everyone's got their – look, just because we're, – we're coworkers. At yeah. the end of the day, if you strip away what we do, because what we do, I do believe, is magical and it's fucking awesome. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you just classify it as a job, okay, we're just coworkers. All of us are coworkers. That's true. You know, so you've got some of these coworkers. Co we're in a big corporation. That's it. With a lot of people that work in there. That's right. A You're lot not going to know everybody. Nope. Some or be come friends. In and out. You'll know them. Hey, hey, Jan. Yeah. Hey, whatever. How's this? How's that? But you know, outside of that, you don't t text, talk, hang out. But uh, so Brian Simpson, you know him? Mm hmm. I remember a time where for a couple of years, I never even looked at the dude, right? I go, is that a homeless black man? <laughs> You know what I mean? He like, does roll up yeah, you, yeah, you see, yeah. <laughs> it's a fat, homeless black man, right? And that's what what I would think in my head, right? And then I, all of a sudden, like, I could see him rise. You see him rise, right? Mm -hmm. And I, it's something that I'm I'm not going out of my way to do it. I just would find myself in conversations with them and just being. I'd see him perform. I go, God, this guy's really good. And over the years, and then like he was in Austin. We were doing some festival. I don't know whatever Moon Moon Tower. Moon Tower. And he was sitting there outside of the hotel. It was like six in the morning. He had just partied and he just got that. I had already slept. And he didn't look good. So I kind of walked up to him. I rubbed his back and I go, you know, hey, you should get some sleep. Like giving advice. And he's like, you think so? I go, yeah, you do. you look weird. You know what I mean? And I, want, I, was, I was concerned for him, mm -hmm. right? But the whole time in my head, it's like, dude, I've been ignoring this guy. I ignored this guy for years, right? So it's just like, I've been analyzing that in my head. Like, what is that about the human condition when you see somebody rise to your level and then all of a sudden you change? But I don't like that about myself. But is that is that what we are? I don't know. I, I try to treat everybody the same from the get-go because you never know who's going to rise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also, I think this – you know what? Let me focus for one second. Would Please plug and promote everything you would like to do right now. All your shows. Why? All right, why it. now? Because I always do it at the top, and I do well, it at the end. Because oh, I'm here the... for the comedian. Oh, yeah. Wow. Instead of people who wait two hours, yeah. you go plug it now, and then everybody's like, "Let me." Can turn I do it, it in like right ten now. minutes? You could do it whenever the fuck okay, you I'll want. Go, but yeah. I want you to I'll know we're doing because it. Because you know that, that's another thing I want. I want to change about myself. When people tell me to do something, I won't do it. But I want to change that about myself. I'm going to ask you. I'm so not ask me to do it now. Will you please? I will. Will you please? I will, and I will. I will. All right. So, um, yeah, I got nothing. No, I no, I have uh. You know, I'm on two podcasts, Tiger Belly and um, Bad Friends with Andrew Santino. And then um, yeah, I, in August, I guess I'm in a show called Reservation Dogs Second Season. And um, I mean, I have a bunch of other things, but they're not coming out yet. So, yeah, that's good. Good. All right. Yeah. Um. So. What? Let's talk. Oh, about what? Well, <laughs> you tell me if we're allowed to talk about it. Yeah, but when I good. saw you, you said... Because uh, I had said I've never met Kalila. I, I'm I a fan okay. of her. I want to say this, okay? Ten years ago when I met her on Tinder, my career was in the shitter. Like I, I, like I was literally about to get let go of my agency. And I wasn't bringing up any income. I wasn't getting any auditions. I would sporadically over the years, maybe we'll book a pilot or something, right? But it was like nothing really – attended to work out for me and I you know I would see other people rise and I was literally at a point where I was like you know what I gotta change something about w how I view my business and 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 not to make it like my number one thing you know because you know when you make your business your number one thing it's there's just a lot of pain that goes along with that right and life is not about that 
So I, you know, decided to pour my attention into a relationship, and I met Kalila at the perfect time. And, um, you know, in many ways, she's the love of my life. I, um, she reinvented my career. Um, we started Tiger Belly with nothing. We just bought equipment from Guitar Center, and we just started doing it. And this was about eight, nine years ago, and um, and it grew, you know, it grew, and it helped other aspects of my business. And now, like, you know, I'm selling show. I have a couple of shows I sold, and you know, I'm I'm in. I have a pretty big movie. I'm coming. You know, I mean, just things are happening, and I really equate that to, um, you know, the dedication of Kalila in me, her investment in me, and my investment in her. And um, she is the love of my life, and I love her dearly. And um, she changed me in so many different ways. That being said, um, we broke up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the first time. You know, I don't know if this is. We'll hold this episode until yeah, you it, announce yeah, we'll, we'll it not, respectfully. We'll announce it. Yeah, yeah. Because I really would like to meet her. I, I saw her for ten seconds at at Christina's party. Yeah, and you as well. You came in, bowed to me, and bounced. And then well, I was like, like, "What a magical gnome!" Or something. I was dressed I, yeah, like well, I was from yeah, the eighties. Yeah, 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 I don't know what it was. Eighties. It was dark. I go, "Is that a magical gnome?" And uh, uh, um, and so, I would love to have her on here too. Yeah, but uh, I did not know you. You guys broke up. No one knows. Yeah. This is the first time I've talked about it. Well, we'll hold this episode. Yeah, I this you. literally is the first time I've talked about it on a podcast. Um, hopefully, my other one would have aired by now that people kind of know. But um, it was a long, difficult decision between us, and um, we still live together. That's what you said. You yeah, we still, still live sleep, on the, sleep on the same bed. We still laugh and giggle, and um, we're going to the Philippines soon because we're working on a project together. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing has really changed outside of the fact that we're not, you know, um, a com in a committed relationship as boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, that might change. I don't know. I mean, but right now we're we feel good. I mean, I can only speak for myself. You know, what I mean, I feel pretty good about it. Um, it's painful. It's hard. I mean, when you're in a relationship with someone that you love that hard for ten years. 10 but, years. Yeah, but a lot of things went on, you know, um, and, you know, people follow the internet, you know, and follow my story, you know, a lot went on in the last year, but it's, you know, honestly, it was mostly my fault. And I'll tell you why. Um, a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, before the pandemic, um, I could see myself out of the relationship in terms of like, giving her what she needs. You know, women, they need cuddles. They need attention. They need intimacy. They need all the, and I was not giving her anything. I was just playing video games and like watching porn all day. You know what I mean? And she would say every day, she would cry and be like, what about me? What's going on? And I'd just be like, I'm just not, I don't know. I'm, I'm going through something. I would make some, some sort of excuse, you know? And um, in the last two or three years, we had sex maybe twice. What? Yeah. And Bobby she, would always, she would always want it. And I just, for some reason, I think getting into a business. Oh, wait, you're, yeah. so you're saying you're not just watching porn. You're jerking off. You're self-satisfying. You're No, I watch porn games. for the cinematography. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Well, you said watch. Bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're self-satisfying everything. The video games, the comedy, the porn. And she's like, what about me? Yeah. And two to three times in two to th two years? Yeah. Wow. You know, you, you, you reflect at your behavior and what caused all this. And um, she's getting a lot of things on the internet, you know what I mean? And I have to play, I have to take 95% of the blame, really, I think, you know, I really believe that. Um, I mean, I'm with you. That's good. Everything is getting more expensive, including rent. Prices are skyrocketing all over the country. And buying a home might feel scary right now but it could be your most stable option. I highly recommend checking out the How to Buy a Home podcast. Host David Sedoni is an industry expert with years of experience who is devoted to helping first-time home buyers navigate this crazy marketplace, and he can help you. Did you know there's a difference between interest rates and mortgage rates? David will break it all down for you. He's also shared pro tips and tricks to navigate this insanely competitive landscape. How to Buy a Home is an incredible resource, and you don't even have to take notes. 
David's How to Buy a Home podcast has helped so many listeners close on houses that they thought were impossible, even as things went bonkers in 2021 and 2022. If you're thinking about buying a home next month, next year, in five years, David can help you too. He can even connect you with a great realtor in your area. Look, I'm about to talk to David, and I know so many of you have already. I've had people come up to me at shows and be like, we bought our first house because of you. That blows me away. And he wouldn't still be coming back here promoting if, if you weren't, y'all. So start your path today with the How to Buy a Home podcast and make this the last year you rent. Listen to the How to Buy a Home podcast today. Find How to Buy a Home on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. The hot summer months are here, and we need to be proactive about keeping our bodies fueled and hydrated. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. Listen, I love liquid IV. I'm taking that every single day. We have it here at the studio. I'm giving it out at shows, all right? I'm giving it to anybody I know that asks. Tom Segura Security got some. What's up, Marcus? What I like most about Liquid IV is how easy it is to take along with you no matter where you are. You just drop it in and you're good to go. It really is that easy. And one stick of Liquid IV hydration multiplier and 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. It contains five essential vitamins. It's got B3, B5, B6, B12, and vitamin C with three times the electrolytes of traditional sports drinks. It's made with premium ingredients, non-GMO, and free from gluten gluten, dairy, and soy. Grab Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code HONEYDO at checkout. That's 25% off of anything you order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code HONEYDO at liquidiv.com. Now, let's get back to the do. I regret so many things. I regret so many things. You know, I regret a lot of things. I'm um, not even specifically to her. I've, I've regretted things in my life, in my career, in other ways. You know what I mean? I've, I, there's a lot of regret there. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm just authentically trying to be myself. And I'm literally doing the best I can. I really am. You know, I, I, I do therapy every week. I have a psychiatrist once a month. I go to meeting, AA meetings. Good. I you mean, I do everything I can. I've always been into self-improvement. I've always been into seeing where my behavior is and where I can change. Am I a fucked up guy? Yeah. Do I have problems? Oh yeah. A lot of problemos. You know what I mean? But um, you know, so I you know, it's life. And um from now on I'm just not I'm I'm I think I'm unfuckable. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, you know, I, I've never gotten a DM, and I've never gotten a DM. You said this to me. Never, never. gotten a DM. I mean, Not I've a had titty, girls. Nothing. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I've had girls that just send a, just titties. Like, hey, here's some titties. Thought you could start yeah, your day so off. Yeah, and that's so kind of them to do that. Yeah, it's so kind of them to do that. Yeah, I've never gotten a shoulder blade or a finger or nothing from a woman, but it's fine. But I told you, once you say you're single and you say that, you're opening the floodgates. You're gonna get some titties. I don't think so because I've asked for titties. <laughs> Before. That's why you didn't get them. They're gonna come. <laughs> no, no, no. I've asked They're for titties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. I've gotten dicks. I believe. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten a couple that. of dicks. Yeah, yeah. I, but I don't like dicks. You know what I mean? More I want dicks titties. than yeah, yeah. tits. But you know, honestly, I don't. It's funny. I um, I I have no. I have. I don't want to see anybody. That's what I want to. So you're in a you're at a point where you're not, or you don't feel you can make things right in this relationship right now. Yet you also don't want to go meet someone. No, that, it's not about that. Right. I don't. I literally don't want to. I have no interest in compromising, in listening. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> in, in like, being a good yeah, partner and pretending. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I have no interest in that. You know what I mean? I, I, I have no interest it's of like, you know, what about do. me? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 You, know, I, you know, I don't yeah. care. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, um, because I, I have no interest of like, you know, uh, hey, let, let's go have dinner. But you know what? I, I, you know, I'm cutting out meat. So let's go to, you know, let's go to Veggie Grill, right? I'm going to Morton's. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm, I'm just going to start dating you, dude. Yeah, I'm going to Morton's. You have <laughs> yeah. fun at Veggie Grill. I have no comp I have no room in my life to go. I'll go there, right? You know, um, with me, it's like you get. This is what you get with me, right? And this is every ask any girlfriend that I've ever had, right? Is you'll get some financial security in the sense of like, you know, I I always pay for the meal. You know what I mean, if you want to go to Tulum, 
we'll go to Tulum, right? Um, if you want, but it's like, you know, one time this one girl was a DJ. I dated a girl that was a DJ, like a amateur, mm -hmm. and she's like, "I'm DJing at a club, you know, what I mean, downtown or Little Tokyo." I go have fun, like if she wanted me to go, I just have no interest, and that's women don't like that. No, they don't like. Yeah, that. <laughs> no. You know, if they were like DJing with Steve Aoki, you know what I mean. And the thing, I'll go that. You know what I mean. But it's like I'll go one time. <laughs> I'll go one time. Yeah, I'll go one time. Right. But then it's like you're there, and then you know what I mean. You're like, and then you gotta lie. Like you're good. I don't know what good is as a DJ. Yeah, I don't. So either. you're lying. You're either. like you were really good when you <laughs> did the two things. You know what I mean. The chick chick was so good. You know what I mean. But like I, I don't want to. I, I'm lying, you know what I mean? And it's like, um, here's another thing though, what I, what I want to say is, is that like, I'm also very good at supporting what you do. Like for instance, right? Let's say you're a girl, mm -hmm. all right? And you're like, you know, I like, um, you know, I like going into the mountains and I like going to the rivers and I like panning for gold. Okay. That's your hobby. Like your great grandfather was a gold panner. 49er. Yeah, 49er yeah, is what they call you, yeah, 49er, right? And I'd be and she and if you were my girlfriend, you said, "I'm going to go to Colorado." I don't know where they do it. You know what I mean? Do they do it in Colorado? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if anyone I, does yeah. it anymore. Yeah, I'm going to go to the mountains of Columbine. I don't know what it is. That a thing? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go to the mountains of Columbine because that's the only thing I know about of, of, of Colorado because of the shooting. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go to the mountains of Columbine, or and I'm going to go paying for gold for a month. I'd be like, "Do you need money to go?" Yeah, I'll give you the money. Right, you go right. Just don't fuck anybody else, right? And I'm completely for that, right? But if I play more than two hours of video games, it's a problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You so I mean? you're independently codependent. What does that mean? Meaning you like alone time. You like to be by yourself. Go over there, do whatever you want to do. Be loyal, have fun. Yeah. Enjoy it. Hell, here's some money. I'll support it. But I'm gonna stay right the fuck here and do my thing. Yeah, I, you know, um, you like to be Starfield is gonna come out in about eight months, I think. You know, what I mean, is this the movie? No, it's a Bethesda video game, oh, okay. right? And they did Fallout and Skyrim, right? And I know that when you know when <laughs> Starfield comes out, I'm gonna be playing that thing 16 hours a day, baby. Are you really? Oh, That's yeah. your thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm playing it 16 hours a day. And I don't want to be in a relationship where they're like, you know, let, I th we're going to go to the park. You know, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I, 50, yeah. and I was like, I don't want to do it. And I, I'm sorry. If you want to go to the park with your friends, I'm all for it. You know what I mean? And if you want to go to the ma ma maestros in between video games and get a steak dinner, let's do it. I'm your guy. Yeah. And at two in the morning, you want to come over, you want to give me a hand job. Let's do it. A hand job. Yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever it, it is. Whatever yeah. it goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, I'll eat your vagina. You know what I mean? I'll eat your vagina. You know what I mean? You know, whatever you want. You know what I mean? And I'll do it good. This I'll do like, the best of my like, ability. <laughs> I'll do the best of my ability, right? Like, my point is, is that. Pitch. So this is. So that's why I know from now on, right? I feel like I'm just going to be alone. Okay. So that's what I was going to say. So yeah. you've accepted that there is no human woman out there that's going to say yes to that proposal exactly. you just exactly. gave exactly. and you're you're okay with that and you you don't blame them one bit yeah you don't blame i get oh, I mean, blame what well i'm saying if they if someone if you said look i'm going to be playing this game for 16 hours a day and they were like <laughs> hey no thanks you're like hey, i get it yeah no now, if no I was harm a, no foul. No, but here's the thing though here's my thing okay is if i wasn't making money right that's one thing, mm -hmm. right? But I go on the road. If I book a movie or TV show, I do that. I show up on time. I know my lines. I know the character. You know what I mean? I sold a couple of shows, one with Theo Vaughn at Fox, right? You know, we're, I'm going to get the showrunner for that. I'm, you know what I mean? And I'm going to go into the writer's room and try to figure this out, right? And me and Theo came up with the idea. So I, I, I create it creatively. I do all the things I need to do to make money and, and to, to be productive in that way, right? If and I that, was a guy that was just smoking weed all day and doing that, that's one thing, right? But I'm not. I'm not a loser, right? It's just that I don't want to go to Veggie Grill. And you know what I mean? I don't. Well, that sounds like video games is your golf. That's what I'm saying, dude. Yeah. yeah. 
How long do you play golf for? I don't golf, but I know those guys are out there like six, That's seven, eight hours and shit. Yeah. Right. And, and for some reason, golf seems okay, okay because if you're outdoors right. and you know, man, you're with your buddies, right? Yeah. But it's like spending more money than you are on those video games. Right, right. Lessons, clothes, yeah, clubs, balls, yeah, yeah. tees, all of it. Yeah, so, you know, um, that's where I'm at. I'm also 50, and also, uh, can I just be honest with you? You look I'm, great, Bobby. Though. Thanks, but I'm a kind of chubbier old Korean man now. <laughs> what, what, in, what? in the market, I don't know. In the market. Here's, the th here's what it is. I have, you know what I mean? I have alpha, man, alpha male eyes. That's that the thing, right? Like, I think God intended me for, to be with, like, a four foot seven. Vietnamese girl named Ning Ning, right? <laughs> Ning Ning. Or, or whatever. <laughs> you, or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I think that's what God intended, but I have alpha man of alpha male eyes. Like, you know, all those dudes, you know what I mean? In the comedy store that you know, or in the comedy, right? That are machismo. Mm -hmm. I have their eyes when it comes to like attractive women, right? Kalila is very attractive, mm -hmm. right? She's beautiful, and and yeah. so it's like, I just feel like with this new approach, you know what I mean? And with my alpha male eyes, I'm just going to be alone. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Are you? No. <laughs> but I'm going to have to be because it's like. <clears throat> Are you okay with it for a minute? At what, point, the, at what point do you think? And it's going to be difficult too because she's in your the same home. What point do you think you'll start longing for that affection? or or? I don't think so. No? No. Do you not enjoy it? Let's be honest. Can we be honest for a second? Please. What I've realized, because I've analyzed every relationship I've ever been in, right? In the first two years, you know what I mean? You're into it, right? Because you're you're getting to know the person, you know, um, the mystery of it all. Like when I first saw Kalila naked, I cried. Did you? Oh, yeah, I whimpered. And I, I looked at the heavens and I said, thank you, Lord. There is a God. You know what I mean? This is like winning a million dollar lottery. I appreciate it. You know? You know, so in the beginning, it's always that, right? And if you're getting to know the person, everything's a mystery, right? But after about three or four years, right, the mystery goes away, right? And it becomes more of a friendship and a compromise. And you have to start, you know, and life happens, right? People get sick, you know what I mean? Things happen, you get old, you know what I mean? And it's like, it begins to fall apart, you know? And it's like, I'm just, well, why is that, right? And I just think that, am I the type of guy that likes the mystery of it and the chase? And then once I have it, you know what I mean? Does that all go away? And it, what I found over the years is it does for me. So I have to figure out how, how I don't want that to happen again, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, so, how do you, Bobby Lee, get over that hump? That's what you need to figure out. They break apart, and I, I want to meet somebody where it just doesn't. Look, I get it. I've never had a successful relationship. Uh, it's always either me or them. You know? Yeah. I, I'm. I'm. Look, I'm not easy. You know, I'm set in my ways. I'm. That's... I'm 49. I'm 50. So. Also, I say this all the time, as comedians, what we do is a very selfish thing. It's a solo sport. It's not it's not improv. It's not a, 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 a an ensemble. It's not a it's a solo sport. When you're up there, you're up there by your fucking self. We don't see each other unless we're on the same show in town. Outside of that, we're seeing each other maybe in an airport here and there. It's a selfish and not in a negative way, but that's what selfish is. It's all about me, and this is my thing that I'm doing. So I get it also as a comedian how exactly how you feel with, like, I'm good on fucking veggie grill, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get it. It's yeah. a selfish thing. Here's those, another added element to my situation is, is that, you know, my intentions with Kalila is we're continuing to do Tiger Belly indefinitely well i mean that's very mature too because why kill a fucking something that's no great? we work great together yeah. and we also have other things that we're producing and things that we're doing and um uh, she's my best friend and so that's another thing it's like i have that with her you know what i mean and so i can't see a world where i, I have no interest you know what i mean um but every once in a while i would love to see a titty <laughs> 
You know what I mean? Let's just yeah. a random titty on, yeah. on DM, you know what I mean? But that's it, you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I'll change my tune, you know what I mean? This is fresh for me, and people change. But, um, you know, with all that said, you know, I, I have no interest. I, um, you know, I want to focus on, you know, internal um, things in terms of just getting better as a human being, you know. I, you know, I also just let the internet affect me, you know? Yeah, I mean, you've gone through a lot of shit, yeah. though, especially for someone who has um, the issues you talk about openly to have to go through that amount of stress and anxiety the last couple months. It's been, it's been terrible. It's been crazy. To yeah, it's been see. terrible. It yeah. Has. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on that people aren't, aren't even privy to that um, I'm not willing to talk about, right? Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, there are a lot of things that are going on, and... Um, I just, you know, I, I just as a human being, I buckled, you know, I'm, you know, and I have to change. And and so that's what. Well, I'd like to say this. Um, you what? can say you buckled. I don't think you buckled. You bent a little bit. But when I saw you in the green room the second time, the first time I called, I lent you my support. I gave you a hug. And I did say that the word the words mastermind and Bobby Lee should never be back to back anyway. So that's how I knew all that was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But the next time I saw you in the in the green room, you were like, "I'm fucking Bobby Lee," and I was like, "God damn right you are. You're Bobby fucking Lee." Yeah, I forget. You know, so, what does that mean? Even like, you know, it's so funny. I know, but like, everything to you. That's what the fuck. Who right. the fuck do you think you're talking to? Yeah, that's it's who. a strange thing because it's like you know you, like you know we go to the grocery store. We're human beings, right? We we have the same problems as everyone else. I'm just I'm a human being living on this planet, and I um you know I never think about really who I am or what I do. Right? Every once in a while, a kid will come up to me and go no sotos papaya, or they'll say. I'm a bad friend or whatever it might be. And it, it feels great. Or I loved you on this. You know what I mean? And that feels good. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you forget about, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a combination between being, because, uh, you know, I, I struggle between being an egomaniac and the king and a peasant, right? Like sometimes I, I feel like I'm the king. Look at who me, look at me. And then there's a lot of times, and this could fluctuate during the day where I feel like I'm a piece of shit, I'm a loser and, you know, you know, you go into whatever that is, you know what I mean? And I just want to get to a point where I'm just who I am and just in the middle somewhere, you know? I mean, that's really essentially where I want to be, you know? But yeah, I am. So when I told you that, that I'm Bobby Lee, it was because I had spent that for two, three weeks going, I'm a loser, you know what I mean? I'm a piece, because I did read things online and, and stuff. And I just, you know, that day I saw you, I was just like, you know, no, fuck it. I'm Bobby Lee. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, but I then do want to find the middle. a killer set. I had a pretty good set, yeah. But, you know, I want to be in the middle, you know? Don't you want to be in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> let me ask you this then, because you mentioned outside we were going to get coffee, you mentioned rehab. So what happened to, how long ago was rehab and, and what, what actually made you finally say, all right, I'm going to do it? Uh, the deaths of um, Bob Saget and Louis Anderson. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. I um, I was used like you know I w I went to Mexico with Santino to do the Cancun fucking Santino. Yeah, Santino the Cancun um just for laughs thing, mm -hmm. and I was totally just I just I had a vomit beard like you know I had poo on my fingers. I was fucked up. Were you drinking? What yeah, were, yeah, I was drinking. Alcohol? You know what I mean. I pull my fingers and vomit beers, you know what I mean? And was just walking out just, you know, days, you know what I mean? And I had a bunch of drugs on me. It was really bad. And um, Is that the first time in how, how many years you used? A couple years, you know what I mean? Okay. But um, I had already been doing it for a couple of months, but it was like now getting out of hand where it was like 24 hours a day and this and that. Yep. And um, then I, then Bob Saget and died and then louis anderson died and then i started coughing up blood whoa yeah i started coughing up chunks of like blood and i would send it to kalila and i go am i what the fuck i can't breathe from dr just from the drinking no from um i smoking cigarettes and so much weed you know what i mean 
and there were like balls of red chunks of things and I, in the napkin. And I, and then I just started thinking, I just convinced myself that I had lung cancer. You know? Jesus Christ. And I yeah. go, I'm next. Cause I, I also have, I'm OCD. So I was like, everything happens in threes. And I'm, I'm the third one. Oh my and God. I just became obsessed with it. Right. And then I convinced myself I couldn't breathe. I would have these panic attacks and I would be also drunk or high or a combination between both things. And I just became imprisoned in, in my own mind, you know? And I started doing prayers, you know what I mean? Like, please, I don't wanna die. I don't wanna die, I have too much to do. And I, um, I asked Kalila, book me into a rehab and that's, I went. That's essentially all it was, you know. I um, it was the worst psychological one. You know, I could probably last another year or two, you know, after that. But it was um, yeah. I, you know, you're when, also when you turn fifty and you're acting like that. You know what I mean? And then people, not not that Bob Saget and Louis Anderson are my age. They're a couple of generation, probably a generation or two above me. You know what I mean? But these are two people that I knew. I wasn't as close to Bob, but he was very nice to me. But Louis, I used to open for and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, um, yeah, I just have too much to do, you know, and I'm old and I have to change. I can't do this anymore. You know what I mean? Your body just kind of goes, whoa, what? I think that's what it was. I think my body was going, we can't do this shit that you were doing when you were 17. Right. You know? And so um, after I got out of the two, I went to two places. After I got out, after a month, I, you know, I, and I lost. Was it a month? Yeah. yeah. I lost. I had a movie that I had got booked with Zoe Deschanel. It was like a pretty big, good movie that when I was in rehab, I lost because I was in rehab. Oh, man. I lost a TV show. You know what I mean? I lost things. You know what I mean? And when I got out, I'm like, you know, I, I just equated all that stuff to be like a result of doing that kind of behavior. And so I'm doing everything I can just not to get back there again, you know? Um, I wanna do the next chapter of my life, which I feel like is my final chapter, you know? I don't know how many chapters I have, you know? But for the rest of my life, I wanna, you know, I wanna do it the best way I can in a healthy way. It's interesting, um, I, when I worked for uh, Oprah, yeah. You worked for Oprah? I did. I worked for Oprah. Oprah Winfrey? Winfrey? Yeah. <laughs> There's only one, bro. I don't know. Enough. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oprah Williams. <laughs> like, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You worked for Oprah Winfrey? Yeah. Where? Um, right here in LA. When she started her network, own the Oprah Winfrey Network, yeah. I was- uh, Did you ever talk to her? I met her one time. Yeah. Uh, twice I met her. Um, yeah. I went and- um, um, I was a producer on her shoots and stuff, and they were doing shows, so I got to meet her, get all their guests and shit, but I was very early in um, setting up her network out here. And at the time, there was this thing they they called a shift. It, would ha it happens in your life, and it sounds like you're going through one right now. You, you're shedding a lot of old relationships mm -hmm. that you've had for some time, mm -hmm. and it seems like this shift is coming. And I don't think it's necessarily just because you're 50. I think there's this time in your life where certain things fall out the way they fall out, and you're in a shift, and you're shedding some people and things, and maybe you keep them in your life in a certain way. Go ahead, Bobby Lee. What I want to say, though, too, is that directly to the people out there, you know what I mean? What I want to say to the people out there is that is I don't have a problem with Brendan Schaub, right? Or Callen or these guys, you know? I mean, I've known Brian Callen for tw over 20 years, you know? I mean, we're from the same show. I mean, he was on Mad TV before me, but we're a part of that family, right? So it's like I've been to Brian's house, you know what I mean? I've hung out with those guys many, many times, right? I was just setting a boundary for myself because they were saying crazy things that I had nothing to do with, right? You are a unique mashup of all your favorite things, and there's a multitude of ways to express yourself. Celebrate all that you are and explore who you can be with customizable prescription glasses from Pair Eyewear. Look, when I first got these, I was like, I don't know how these are going to look. Let me test it out. They're awesome, all right? They've got so many different colors, so many different styles. The prescriptions are on point. Then you just, boom, snap these little magnetic pieces right over. You look from the side. You can't tell. I'm telling you, I'm very um, critical 
and I love these things. All right, pair eyewear's base frame and magnetic top frame combination makes it easy to switch up your style. Base frames start at just 60 bucks, including prescription lenses. There are hundreds of top frame designs to match whichever base frame you choose. For every pair purchased, Pair provides glasses and vision care for children around the world, which is awesome, and I love that. Get glasses as unique as you are. One pair, infinite style, starting at just $60. Go to PairEyewear.com slash Honeydew for 15% off your first purchase. That's 15% off at P-A-I-R eyewear.com slash honeydew. It's summer, y'all. Lighten up. Daggrass is great anytime. They can help you chill out before a big meeting or be a new replacement to that evening glass of wine. They're the perfect pairing to everything summer has to offer. Daggrass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Daggrass CBD products are made with 100% organic hemp that's easy to dose and the effects come on smooth. They offer a variety of products from their token smokable pre-roll joints as well as hemp flavor and variety of CBD tincture drops. Enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. All Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. So whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, dad grass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Listen, I'm telling you, I know some of this stuff out there is high octane, gives people panic attacks and all that. This dad grass is great. I've even had their mom grass too. It's fantastic, all right? Right now, dad grass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash honeydew. Go to dadgrass.com slash honeydew for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com slash honeydew. Now, let's get back to the do. So it's like, I'm not in a war with them, you know? I just told them, don't, you know, normally these guys... I would let people talk to me in that way, right? Because in comedy, obviously, you know that there are people that are not like you. Like you and I, I think, are more similar in terms of like our sensibilities. You know what I mean? We're a little sensitive, no? Very. Yeah, very sensitive. And we're, um, you know, little soft creatures, right? And there are other people that are like more dominant alpha E, right? And so it's like I usually just absorb that shit, but I'm like, because of the shift that you're talking about, I just basically said, hey, man, don't talk to me like that because I didn't do anything, right? And um, we're done. Why, why can't I do that as a human being? You right? can. That's what I'm saying. To another human being. So mm -hmm. that's all that happened. But people online are like saying like it's a war or there's a, there's a division. There is no division, right? I'm just a guy that says I don't want to be talked to in that way. I didn't do anything, right? It was – just out of left field. It was just, it was very traumatic and I don't need to take that. Yeah. You know my I mean? producer Kirsten is on the fucking, she's got her finger on the pulse of everything podcasting. And she was telling me all the stuff that was going on. So I watched, I watched your episodes and I've talked to other comedians about it as well. And, You've been pretty open and honest about everything out there. Yeah. And so I, I don't blame you one bit. And I, mean, I saw that's Brendan Ed, we were at a wedding together and I, um, you know, he was getting coffee and I walked up to him. I go, what'd you get? Oh, he goes, I got a ice. What are you going to get? You know what I mean? I go, I'm going to get a double espresso. You know what I mean? I'm not that him and I are going to get back to the place, but it's like, I, I feel like there's, you know, I'm well, that was like a work function. You were professional. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, but um, boundaries are. Necessary. I'm not allowing that anymore. Yeah, good. I, I don't want to allow it. You know, but um, that's all it is. You know what I mean? It was like um, I did. I never had a problem with those guys. I love those guys. In fact, one of my most viral things when it comes to podcasting is on Finer Than Kid. It's like still out there. You know what I mean? It's a very funny bit, and um, you know. We worked well together at one point. It's just, it just got out of hand, you know. And um, I don't know, man. It was. Just, I wish it never happened. But and did that affect my relationship with? Yeah, it, it. You know, it's. It did. I mean, a lot of that stuff affected it. It kind of um, put more fuel on something that you know. What I mean, that didn't need more fuel, right. you know. And um, that was already having problems. Yeah, and also, I, I, I. I you know, I don't know if 
I think maybe a year from now, maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll realize that Kalila's the one for me and I'll, we'll get back. I don't know. Who knows what'll happen, but for Sounds right like now, she's still going to be right next to you on the bed. In a yeah. Year yeah. And, now, and right? we're, I'm, I sleep, we sleep great and we communicate and, um, there's a lot of crying and a lot of, um, growing up that we're doing, you know, and it's, you know, really, it's tough, but, um, like I said, man, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I, that, I'm no, I'm also, that's another thing. It's like, I don't give a shit. I, I'm not, you know, I, I don't want to live in the results of anything. You know, it's like, I'm not a fortune teller. You know, I can't foresee I could die in a year. I don't know what's going to happen. Right. But it's like the most important thing is obviously the moment and, um, the here and now, and I just need to li 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 live in this space, you know, because for my whole life, I've never lived here. I've never lived in the moment. Everything was like, what is it, you know, how come this guy got that? And how how can I get that? And what if this happens and that happens? It's just like not living, you know what I mean? You're reacting to things that didn't happen, right? You're reacting to things that happened in the past, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, it's no way to live, and I can't. That's do what that. the EMDR therapy did. That's for what I'm me. doing. Yeah, that you worked. So wait, it is, you had trauma. Yeah, so I, I. It's so funny because I do it too. I Dr. Drew recommended it. I started talking to him about it, and Love he's like, guy. "Have you ever done it?" And I said, "No." He goes, "You would know if you have. It's not talk therapy." So I went, and um, I had been fine as far as anxiety and things. So or so I thought, and then my daughter almost got hit by a car. And man, did I come unhinged. I got scared to fly. I got scared of heights, just fear, fear, fear. And I couldn't shake it, the flights. You know, I'd be like, oh, every bump. And I used to fucking love taking off on the runway. I felt like a fucking rock star. Yeah. And um, I knew I needed to beat it because we fly fucking everywhere. So I went to EMDR and I started working on that. I mean, I sleep on flights now. Yeah. It works. Yeah. And it works so pretty that, quickly, your, too. Your daughter almost getting run over was the traumatic event? That was the fucking thing that, that was made thing. that. I was laughing like a, like my trauma just been laying in a hammock. Like, oh, there's my, there's my call. Yeah. And here it comes, you know? Yeah. And it had been there all these years. It just wasn't triggered by anything. Mm. And that fear triggered it. And man, did it show up in ways that I had never experienced before. Yeah. There's a lot of incidences that happened to me as a kid that I've worked on with EMDR, and it is, it's, it's, I'm not, you might have a fully processed at all, but it's like. Are there any you're comfortable talking about? Oh, yeah. I mean, the one, the main one that I, I processed is, you know, my brother and I used to, I mean, this is not funny, you know. <laughs> it's not funny. At, it's not funny. This is a comedy podcast, right? This is not funny <laughs> you're at all. You're doing just fine. It's not funny at all, though, man. All right. Anyway. So my brother and I, <laughs> we lived in Minnesota, right? And um, Edina, Minnesota. And um, Dover Drive, I, that's the street we lived on. And um, at, my brother and I shared a room. And I, I don't know how old I was, maybe eight or nine. My brother was six. And I re distinctly remember two, three in the morning being awoken to my mom being in my room. She turned the lights on and she opened her mouth and her mouth was bleeding. Her tooth was missing, right? And then she was t saying in Korean, help me, um, my dad's coming in, right? Because my dad had punched her in the face, right? And then I remember my brother and I and my mom barricading the door. Holy shit. Yeah, because my dad was coming in and I, <laughs> He was drunk, you know, saying all kinds of say. And I just remember the fear of that, right? And um, he opens the door, we get, I mean, you know, he got in and I don't remember what happened afterwards, right? But I just remember distinctly doing that, you know what I mean? You can still see your mom with that tooth knocked out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she was just in town because she did the um, Bad Friends Live with oh, me yeah. and Andrew, right? And her, the tooth that's missing, she has an artificial tooth there. Really? Little. But it's like, it's stained a little bit, right? So it always reminds me of it. You know what I mean? But I've done EMDR on that incident, right? And there's a lot of instances like that in my childhood, right? And what that does is like, you know, now as a, an adult, you know, um, you walk into every room. I, I don't walk into a restaurant 
or a comedy club like everyone else. You know, I walk in and I look at everything first. I look at the permit where it's safe. You mean where the exits are? Fire right? exits. Right, you have a fire me exits, too, all that too, stuff, bro. right? Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I just look at life in a different kind of way and in in, in in a cautious way, you know? And it all stems from, you know, how I was raised and the experiences that I have, you know? And I don't want to live like that either, right? So I've, I've done... There's a lot of, and my mom used to be very violent to me too. So there's some instances with that, but it's like, um, it's funny. My therapist says that like, um, if I didn't find comedy, I would be one of those guys, you know what I mean? That, you know, I could have been, you know what I mean? A transient kind of a guy, you know what I mean? Um, if I didn't get sober early on in my life, and you know, I got sober when I was 17. There's a lot of choices that I made. The two things was getting sober and also um, starting to do stand up at 23, that saved me. You know what I mean? Because you know I was able to find something that you know I used as a defense mechanism, which is comedy and humor. And um, because I was sober too, that I could walk through fear. You know what I mean? A little easier because back then, or still in AA, you know, you have this higher higher power thing. So I would, you know, mm-hmm. the third step is to turn it over, right? So it's like- What's that mean? Turn it over to God. So let God, you know, have basically faith. Jesus take the wheel. Yeah, but not Jesus, you know. Yeah, you know, I'm with yeah. you. So it would be like, when I was 23, when I, 23 and I started doing standup, I was so scared. But I would do that, I'd go, I'm just gonna turn it over and then I'm going to um, just dive in, you know what I mean? Because, um, you know, I, I want a big life. I've always wanted a big life. And as a kid living in the circumstances as I did, you know, I, I always dreamed of something different and better for myself, you know? And um, so luckily I found comedy. I mean, luckily, if I lived in Korea, dude, I'd be a fucking, I'd be carrying rice. <laughs> I mean, I mean. <laughs> All get back and forth from between <laughs> funniest rice carrier. Right, I'd be making everyone laugh, right? I put the rice in my nose, or I would snort rice. You know I, mean? I would do yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying, right? Right. I would do tricks. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you like I, <laughs> you know, I would be having some ridiculous job like that, right? But like, so it, luckily, you know, in America, you know, what I mean, there are other options. Thank God for podcasting. Like, this is a thing. Changed my life. It changed my life too, you know? So it's like, um, what I love about this, podcasting, and I love, this is what I love about it, is, you know, back in the 90s, you'd come to LA. When did, when did you move to LA? Uh, the second time, 97. Right. So when you come here, so back then, with 97, were you doing stand-up then? No, I did improv first and then stand-up after. Right. But when you came here, you're like, all right, do you, there was like a blueprint on how to make it. I mean, I had a loose direction. I just knew I needed to get on stage. Right. And then right, I would right. figure That's it the out first from thing, there. Like sorry. I never once considered agent, manager, none of that in oh, the beginning. Really? Not in the very beginning. Yeah. The first thing was like, let me find places But that was to do an this. important thing yes. that you needed. So you you know, a lot of comics would hang out and they'd be like, Who's your agent? Or mm-hmm. are you SAG? You know what I mean? Yeah, and all SAG those things. Was a thing. SAG yeah. was a thing. I, was I got my SAG, SAG card. Yeah. And then you would go, you would contemplate them. How do I get a SAG card? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then they would go, you have to take acting classes. So you'd be in a Meisner technique class. You know what I mean? Spent all your money, right? On like doing repetitions or whatever, right? Because you there was a blueprint. And then there was gatekeepers. Like if these casting directors didn't like you, you're fucked. Or if these agents didn't like you, you're fucked, right? Or if this network said- right. we- you're you're funny, but we like these ten people, right? So right, so it, it, it those were it, and if they didn't like you, you're shit out of luck, right? But what the internet did was it you it bypassed that. It did. You Not only I mean? did it do that, it yeah. also proved us right. I knew. I'm not saying I'm funnier than anyone else, but I'm saying I know I'm funny enough to make a living at this and be successful at it, and you're not giving me a chance. And these fucking people and these things let us go right over that fucking wall or under it or around it or through it and prove ourselves not only right, it's a big fuck you back to everybody else. Like, look, you're just holding us back for nothing. Why? Because I look like an ex-boyfriend you don't like. You know what I mean? It's that dumb sometimes. (laughs) It's that fucking dumb. Yeah, yeah. There is no 
structure to this. There's no like, do this for four years, you do this. Another two years, you're this. And then you're a doctor, you know, a lawyer, and then you're a judge. None of that. Yeah. None of that. Yeah. So uh, so Saturday night, I did a, a Tiger Barely Live. We were at the Ace Hotel uh, Theater in downtown, sold it out, um, 1,600 seats. We did a game show on stage, right? And it was all Tiger Belly fans, you know what I mean? And we did a... a, a we did a Q and A for VIPs earlier, and it, it, I got really emotional. People got really emotional. And they were talking about why they love our sh- podcast and this and that. Anyway, during the show, you know, packed. It was it killed. I mean, it was like people stand. It was insane, right? But my agent showed up. My agents, not Asians. Asian, <laughs> no, no, Asians. The Asians showed up too. Asians. They were they, 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 Asians were there too, right? But like my agents showed up, and they're you know they were wearing their suits, and they're in the back. And they're like looking around, and they're mean, and they're. Like, and eight years ago, I called them and I said, "Can you help me with this podcast?" And they go, "Well, now we we do, you know, what I mean, you do that on your own, right?" And you know, I feel bad because you know they don't get a cut of anything, you know what I mean, right? And they're, you know, I think I don't know. We're trying to figure it out, right? There ain't no figuring it I know out. No, we are. We're t- I am trying to figure it out. Don't you figure and it no, out. No, no, no. I'm trying to figure it out to see what they can do. Because I do love them. Just let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. Right, I'm finish. silent. Let, let, all right, let me finish what I'm saying. Because it's my alpha eyes. Uh, Matt I think and you're I, <laughs> Matt, Matt, my agent, right? Yeah. He, he's been my agent since the 90s, mm-hmm. right? So it's like there is a relationship there. But, you know, a long time ago when I asked for help, you know, they go, we do bigger things, podcasts, right? At the time, they were like, what are your numbers? I go, we had just started. So I go, 100 downloads? I don't know. You know what I mean? 50 downloads, right? Like, no, 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 right? So they didn't help. And they go, you just do that on your own. So I did, right? And now, you know, it's a thing, right? And now they all want a piece of it, right? So it was just kind of a cool, it was kind of not a fuck you, but it was more of a, this is what I did. This is what you could have helped with, right? And you didn't. So now if you want something, go get you the mega deal. Go that's do what that I, and that's get a what cut I said. off of that. That's what I said. Take this fucking spaceship that I just took out the Pluto and take us to another fucking universe, motherfucker. Right. And then you can have it. That's what so I... I had I had an agent tell me the same thing. What? He's, he laughed and said, come back when you're making real money. And I said, that's exactly when I'm not coming back. <laughs> I know. That's exactly what it's, I said to him. I asked the same. I asked my manager. I'm like, look, man, if you can help me between – this was between the Crab Feast and the Honeydew. Yeah. If you can help me, man, we can do this. And he just wasn't – he couldn't. And I'm like, then well, I got to – Well, you could. I got to – then I got to do this could. on my – Right. Yeah. Then I got to do this on my own. I know. And I wouldn't have it any other fucking way. Yeah, I know. I mean, but don't you think that it would have been nice to get help? Yeah. 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 Of course it would, but in the, in the in hindsight, I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, I've I get, learned I get so saying. much. Yeah. more through doing all of this, not just about podcasting stuff, but we've had producers t- do shady shit and turn over. You learn a lot about people, you know. Yeah, we've got I just want to say I do love phenomenal. my agency. I'm not I saying think, you don't. Thank you. I, I'm with a, You don't even need to say no, this. No, I want to, though. Go ahead. Yeah, I I'm, I love them. You said nothing wrong. Yeah, no, I do you love said, them. I came to them. They, I know, but they I'm just saying help, that's the truth. And now it's huge. It is the and truth. Now they want to it's cut. the truth. So now they got to do something with it. Yeah, that's yeah. All. So, I, so what we said was it's funny because we went there and, you know, it's a huge bill. You know, it's the billion. You know, they have Steven Spielberg and all these huge names, right? Radiohead or whatever, right? So that's what they represent, right? And we're in this beautiful conference room. And it was flattering for them to go, you know what I mean? Like, we want to help, you know what I mean? And it's cool, but you can't help but think, you know what I mean? Wow. You know what I mean? Where it's, were you where, when I asked I you? mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. But I do love them. And, you know, I don't, you know, thank you for everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean? It's so it's weird, you know. Yeah, I've been watching you put your foot in your mouth lately. The, yeah, I, I saw I, I, the I, Emily I, shit on the Comedy Store oh podcast. God, oh Kill God. me, dude! You were because I didn't see that first. I saw your apology first in person. You were like, "Oh my God!" I saw that, and then I saw the clip, and but I started. The reason why? Dying okay, I want to tell Emily I'm this. I, I just want to say the reason why I said that. And Emily books for me. I know, and I love her. I love. I love her. My sushi. Honestly, group. I love her, and I have to say this. Okay, that and she I, knows you do. By the way. Deeply, 
And not only that, is is that the reason why I did that, right? So let's say to for your audience, I was on the Comedy Store podcast and I lied. And I basically said, yeah, I don't get spots either that much. You know what I mean? I think they only give me spots out of loyalty is what I said, right? And then I looked in the, through the window and Emily was in the room, <laughs> right? And I go, yeah. I'm kidding, right? But the reason why I said it in the first place is so that Johnny could feel better. Because he's not getting spots. Yeah, he's not getting spots. So I just wanted him to feel better. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did to, to, to soothe him. I, honestly, that's what it was. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I what I do get spots every time I call in. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're there all so the time. So then I felt like a weasel. <laughs> you're there all the time. I get more spots than anyone else. So I felt like a fucking weasel. I felt like a weasel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I want to say to Emily, you know what I mean? I'll do anything. You know? That's what, you know? That's it. Yeah, I apologize, you know. <laughs> I'm a fucking weasel. Am I a weasel? No. All right. So. What's up? I want to know what's next for you then. You're just going to take some time. How? Do, let me ask you this. Forget this. How do you heal? How do you move on when the person's literally under your roof in the bed next to you? How do you move past what that? Heal? There's no healing. There's no healing. No, because. It, you said you were heartbroken. You no, said those things. No, we're, we're both heartbroken about it so how do you unbreak your heart but over but, there but was that Sony Braxton yeah but what soothes what <laughs> yeah. what soothes us is that we have a deep she's the love of my life I believe that and I, I, and and I that love doesn't her mean more. it needs to be intimate I know I, I know I yes. love her more than I, I can't she's like I'll tell you how I feel about her I feel about her like I feel about my brother you know what I mean in terms of like like, I'm going to know this person. If she ever needed anything, you know what I mean? I would give her a lung, right? Like, that's how I feel about her, you know? Um, she's my best friend. And um, I also love our relationship on our podcast. And we work so well together. It's such a good yin and yang. You know it, I mean? it is. And yeah. it's interesting that, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking about it now. And you guys, as a couple... Your child has been Tiger Belly. Yeah. You have built that from, like you said, 50 fucking downloads. Everybody starts at one download. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah. started at one. Yeah. And you've built that together and look at it now. Yeah. It's fucking thriving. It's so, thriving, yeah. Yeah. So to to have to pivot in your relationship from this um, romantic boyfriend-girlfriend couple and to this professional couple and still maintain, I think it's pretty impressive. I know you're you're still newly into it, but well, no, I mean, because if you look at I think the re I think you look at like I don't know what Chris Pratt and Anna Ferris's relationship is it, but it doesn't seem like they're divorced. I know, I and know they're divorced. both remarried. I but think. I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's there's some maybe some hostility or ugliness in that relationship, oh, okay. right? Right. And I don't ever want to be like that with Kalila, right? So I, I, I look at other Hollywood or like, you know, two people, because, you know, Kalila and I, we're, you know, we're not a regular relationship. We're, our relationship is out in the public. We're mm -hmm. in the public eye, right? And it puts a d different dynamic on the relationship. You know what I mean? And so it's like, because we're in the public eye, and I, I don't want to get resentful. I don't want the relationship to sour and, and have these deep resentments and this and that. So we're mindfully doing it in a healthy way so that we can still have our love, right? And still have a business and still continue in that way. You know what I mean? And I, and I, I think we're doing it. If I, I you know, we talk every night and I, you know, we, about how we feel and what's going on. And there's a lot of sadness, like that's, I said. Well, that's why I was asking about healing. You said there were tears and things yeah, yeah, like I don't, that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we're in the process of it. I mean, I don't know. Have you ever done that? Have you ever broken up with someone that you lived with and then stayed with, living with them? Yeah, but I've never been in a relationship like this before. Nothing like this. I mean, every relationship I've ever had was two years and I was out like clockwork, like to the day almost. That's what you said, yeah, two yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this has been a completely different thing. Although all my relationships with previous girlfriends have been really great and I love them all. You know what I mean? But you know, I you know, the only one that I really kind of talk to that's around is Sarah Highland. You know what I mean? Not from Modern Family, but the comedian Sarah Highland. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Sarah Highland does our podcast. She did the live. She's very close with Kalila, you know, and um, you know, 
Yeah, I, but you know, Sarah and I didn't see each other after our relationship for years. And then it, so she got married to somebody, Jen Rosenstein, who's a beautiful, talented woman. And, um, you know, now they're a part of our family, you know, but, um, I don't want to do that with Kalila. I want to keep going and I want to, you know, I want to see her every day. And I want to, um, we also have seven animals, bro. Damn. You know a I mean? lot of animals, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have seven animals that we got during our relationship. You know, and how do you split them apart? Right. It's it's like having children. I love every single one of them. You know what I mean? Deeply. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a it's a hard thing, man, but we're figuring it out. Is that an hour? Yeah, bro. That went good, yeah, huh? Man. Great. Did you like it? I loved it. I wanted to say thank you very much for coming on and talking about of that. Course, I know it's not man. easy. It's fresh and all. But before I get you out of here, I want to ask you now, after what we've talked about, going back to what you know about yourself and everything you've said, what advice would you give your 16-year-old self? There's a lot, man. Um, my 16-year-old self, I would say, all those things that you think are going to fix you, you know what I mean? These goals and aspirations and all these things that if only this happens or this, I promise you, number one, you will get those things. And number two, you won't feel any different, right? So get happy now, you know, because it's, and I used to never believe that. I mean, even as a kid, you would hear great people would say, you know, you know, it nothing, money or all these won't fix you. And you would go, fuck no, it will. You trust me, I'm so stressed out right now, you have no idea. I don't know how I'm going to eat. Yeah, and those things do sure. alleviate, right? Yes. But all these other issues, and I'm telling you right now, there is really no difference in terms of how I feel. You know what I mean? So it's like I have to do it now. You know what I mean? And also at 16, I would say, like, you're going to get pussy. <laughs> You, you'll get it. You'll yeah. get it. You know because I was like, na- yeah. hate it. <clears throat> Not no, DMs, girls, but you're right, getting right, 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 No, yeah. you will. You'll see a vagina one day, right? You know, I would because if I told my 16 year old, he would cry. Because at 16, I thought, because uh-huh, in high school, no one looked at me. I was like a you know a Korean kid in an all white school, and. Not that they were racist or anything like that, but I just was not viewed. That didn't make you exotic? That no, that no, no, because if I was like, if I looked like you know, BTS, you know what I mean? A tall, kind of a good looking, maybe, right? But I was like small too, you know what I mean? And kind of like wire, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, the wiry and eccentric, I guess, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, no, I, I thought I was going to be you know what I mean, an insult or whatever, right? But I want to look at my 16-year-old and say, one day you'll see very good ones. <laughs> <laughs> nice ones, you know what I mean? <laughs> It'll be good. You know what I mean? You'll love it. I you love you, Bob. Yeah, I love you too, bud. Um, promote whatever you'd like again, So Bad please. Friends, Tiger Belly, and that's pretty much it. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. Love you, bud. And thank you guys as well. As always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We'll talk to you all next week.